I struggled to write this review because truly, I'm not sure how to review watches. For me, a watch is kind of like a pager that tracks my steps. For those that don't know what a pager is, essentially what I'm saying is that a watch is for phone notifications, responding to said notifications, and ultimately deciding if grabbing my phone is worth it. After many years of Apple Watches, I'm trying something new, kind of, which in this case is the Samsung Watch 4. Let's see if this is something that you should buy. Ultimately, the answer is yes, but for the wrong reasons. I'll talk about that later, but for now, let's talk about this watch in particular. This one is the 40mm cellular version, meaning that it is smaller of the two sizes that Samsung sold, and allows for eSIM support if you really want that, if you're somehow ever away from your watch in the first place. This has a 1.2 inch 396 by 396 AMOLED screen that is covered by Gorilla Glass DX Plus and is 60 hertz like pretty much every watch. Gorilla Glass DX Plus is a stupid name and apparently not the best design seeing that Samsung moved to using the Sapphire Crystal right after this model. Sapphire Crystal is a more high-end cover with Apple's stainless steel and titanium watches having that type even to this day while only the aluminum Apple Watch has the Ion X strength in glass. Ultimately, small old design as the 40mm newer models have a little bit larger than a 1.2 inch screen, even though they're still that 40mm size, which is weird because they say 40mm is a screen, even though that's not true. There is a power and home button on the side, which is nice because they are programmable to an extent, and yes, Bixby and Samsung Pay can be disabled. The frame is aluminum and has a weird shape with two lines jutting out the top and the bottom for the band attachment, but makes it too tall for most wireless chargers. And that's why it feels like a dumb design choice. Of the many phones that support reverse wireless charging, it only worked on this watch with a Samsung phone. Even on most wireless chargers, it just doesn't work. I was stuck with the phone or wireless charger that it came with, and with this it made the Qi wireless charging not feel as universal as it normally is. As for the battery, we obviously get a small 247 milliamp battery, which is almost half the size of a 425 milliamp cell found in the Watch 7 44mm. To power this, we get a weak Samsung Exynos W920, which is a dual-core processor that comes with 16GB of storage and 1.5GB of RAM. We also get Bluetooth 5.0, Wi-Fi 2.4 and 5GHz, regular GPS, NFC, and IP68 dust and water resistance with 5 ATM or 5 atmospheres slash 5 bar and military standard 810H certification, which the last three are definitely bold claims. I have opened this watch up before, so I doubt that this is still water resistant, but even if it's not opened after three years, who knows? As for the processor, it's a watch, so does that even matter? Yes, for two reasons. One, the menu can lag quite a lot. I just thought maybe that's how it is, but no, the Watch 7 showed me that Samsung watches aren't actually all slow. This runs Samsung Watch 1 UI 5, while 6 is coming and is standard for the Watch 7. This is good seeing that it's still being supported, but at the cost of a slow watch. Another thing is battery life, which is just bad here. Now I don't have snapshots, but I was consistently ending the day with about 30 to 40%, which is fine, but my one year old Apple Watch Ultra will end the day at about 80 to 90%. So this Samsung battery sucks. Again, this is a three year old model and probably just needs a new battery, but definitely something to consider. On my Watch 7, I'm ending the day with about 80 to 90%, so I'm writing this off as just a bad battery, which is surprisingly easy to replace. As for the sensors, we have the bioelectric impedance analysis, optical and electrical heart rate sensors, and a skin temperature, though I'm not really sure if that last one was a misprint by Samsung. And that's actually the biggest issue from Samsung is their spec pages just suck. They're either hard to find or do feature incorrect or dramatically missing specs. Like for example, on the Watch 7 spec area, it says that the battery is non-removable and that's it and the 44 millimeter spec has a page missing altogether. And that's why this video and especially this section matter the most. Like I said, battery life isn't that good on this model, but that's okay. It does what I need and feels really light doing it at 25.9 grams thanks to that aluminum frame and the lack of sapphire. The Apple Watch has a digital crown, which is dumb because it's not digital, but the Samsung Watch has a rotating bezel, but not on the non-classics. On those, we get the digital bezel, which is weird to get used to. 
For me, it doesn't work every time and often feels counterintuitive, but I guess you could get used to it. This watch is not the fit version, but it's mainly used for health reasons. I like that the auto workout tracking happens very quickly, about 10 minutes when I'm walking, and on the Apple Watch it takes about 15 minutes, and on other ones it's even quicker. But there is an issue, and that's auto stop. Meaning that if you run somewhere, talk to people for a few minutes, and then run home, it'll start two workouts while the Apple Watch will stay on one. You decide which one is better. To be fair, this is probably a setting, but it's kind of frustrating. As for notifications, it's always strange because I set it to where the notifications will go straight to the watch when I'm wearing it, but the watch would vibrate after the phone does, as if it's mirroring, even though I turned off that feature. So you get double notifications via vibration when you shouldn't. I do like the health features though, as the information given during a workout feels way more than what Apple tells you, which definitely surprised me. For example, the sleep tracking actually gives you a score, which is kind of interesting. One thing I didn't like is that it did feel kind of stereotypically Samsung. The animations and operations just felt clunky, like there's no animations and the watch just goes from picture to picture while Apple products just flow and transition smoothly, even though in theory they're doing the same thing. It's little things like that that make it harder for iPhone users to switch, but they don't really need to because they can't. Yep, this watch only works on Android devices, giving you more features on Samsung devices. It's the first Samsung watch to do that, but it's definitely not the last. And with the health features, I actually needed to download like three apps technically to pair this to my phone, which just feels like so much. Like I said, the whole user experience just feels clunky. I've been wearing smartwatches forever. I use some Android Wear watches like the LG G Watch and Samsung Gear Live, but the Motorola Moto 360 was really what made an impact. Actually, I wrote and filmed a review for the Motorola Moto 360, which was one of my first videos on YouTube on Go Cell Phone Repair's channel. It has over 3,000 views right now, and it was published three years before I started my channel. After that, the Apple Watch came out, and I was instantly hooked. I usually use an iPhone for everything, and at the time, I would have one phone. After I got the iPhone 7, that became my main phone, and sure, Android Wear watches worked on the iPhone, but the Apple Watch was made specifically for the iPhone. I got the original watch, then the Series 1, Series 4, Series 7, and now the Ultra. I've been called a fanboy of Apple because of this, but those people don't know what they're talking about, and it's simply not the case, as I've reviewed numerous Android phones, like a ton, and only 14 iPhones, or about 2 iPhones per year. So I looked into getting a different watch, and the Samsung Watch 4 literally fell into my life. And now, it's gone. Yes, by the time this video comes out, I've used this to get $175 off the Samsung Watch 7, something that I'm going to review as well, but if it weren't for the trade-in value, I wouldn't really recommend this watch. However, it is pretty cheap at like 40 or 50 bucks. Don't get me wrong, it's good for health tracking and being a watch, but that's about it. And that's my review of the Samsung Watch 4. Clearly, I left out a bunch of stuff about the watch, but again, this is based on how I use watches in general. I don't listen to music or make calls on this, but you can. There's probably a way to web browse, but come on. The keyboard is awkwardly small and barely usable, but I guess it's cool that it exists. But what do you think? Would you consider this watch? Let me know, and as always, thanks for watching.